So let's do a brief introduction of Microsoft Endpoint Manager. Now this used to be called Microsoft Intune. It had that name for several years. Microsoft rebranded it and did some updating to it and they now call it Microsoft Endpoint Manager. So the, uh, here I am. I just did a search for Microsoft Endpoint Manager to get to this page. You can watch a little video that it's a typical Microsoft demo video. Hey, this is why you should use all of this. And then down here, it gives you some more information on it. And the idea of Endpoint Manager is that you can use it to manage multiple devices from a central location. And these can be mobile devices, so Android, uh, iOS, Mac, uh, Windows, whatever. You can use it to manage uh, laptop computers, desktop computers. Basically, just about any device that connects to your network, you can manage through Microsoft Endpoint Manager. And that's the idea behind it. Now, in your pricing here, you'll see what this costs. It's actually not that cheap. So, Enterprise Mobility plus Security E3 is $880 per month per user. Um, E5 Security, which gives you a few more options. And down here, you can expand these and you can see which options are included in uh, which level. Um, but the Security E5 is $1480 per user per month, and that is based on an annual commitment. Now, you do have a free trial available. Right here is your Try Now button, and you can click that, and it will take you to a place where you can sign up for a free trial, which it's throwing fits because I already have one here. But that's where you would go to set up your free trial, and I believe it's like a 90-day trial. It might be back on that page that I can't get to because I already have an account. Um, but I believe it's about a 90-day trial of uh, endpoint protection. So once you sign up for the trial, you'll create a domain. And for a trial, you'll do a generic domain. So a domain that's uh, on Microsoft.com. So the one I chose was yvcbassett.onmicrosoft.com. When you come into your endpoint manager, you just go to endpoint.microsoft.com and it will have you sign in and it will bring you to this uh, admin page. And this is your dashboard uh, from which you're, well, it's your home admin page from which you're going to manage your system. There is a specific dashboard page here, which gives you ideally a real quick overview of all of your endpoint uh, status. So... Let's just walk through these pages real quick so you can get an idea of what's available. On your devices pages, it's going to list all of your devices. And I currently have one device enrolled. It's a Windows device, but you can also see the number of Android, iOS, or iPad, Mac OS, Windows mobile devices that are all part of your enrolled network. You will also have enrollment alerts. You'll have compliance status. It will show you how many of your devices are in compliance and grace period, not evaluated or out of compliance. You will see configuration status and software update status. Now, I have just created this a few minutes ago, created my trial for it, and uh, added a device to it. So some of this data hasn't really populated yet, and some of it I haven't configured yet. So that's your overview. You can also view all devices right here. And here you'll see the device name, uh, what it's managed by, what the ownership of it is. It's a personal device. In this case, the status. You can go to monitor and look for any types of devices with errors or conflicts. You can look down here under your monitor status and you can look at specific you know devices with restricted apps you can look at certificates you get the idea now let's come back to devices you can also break it down by platform so here are my windows platforms and i can set windows policies specific for those platforms and here will show me how i can do device enrollment now this is going to be on a per platform basis we'll come back here in a minute so I can go to the iPad iOS and I'll see my iPad iOS devices, my iPad iOS enrollment, and then specific policies related to iPad and iOS devices. 
So it gives you a nice way to break down and manage specific types of devices. Under device enrollment, we have options to enroll devices, and here are options for Windows enrollment, Apple enrollment, Android enrollment, any enrollment restrictions, corporate device identifiers, and device enrollment managers. All right, then we also have policies that we can look at. Compliance policies, conditional access policies, configuration policies, Windows 10 update rings, Windows 10 feature updates. And if you click on any of these, it'll show you what's available. And then for almost all of them, you are going to have up here an option to create. So you're going to look for that little add button. And this would be a uh, Windows 10 update ring. So I'm creating a profile for conditional access. It would be creating a new policy. But this is where you manage all of those policies that are specific to these devices. Now, those are device policies, and this is a big benefit of using Endpoint Manager because I can use set device policies that will then be applied automatically to all of those devices, depending on which type they are. All right, so in addition to all of the policies, I also have apps. And so I can take apps and I can create apps here. And again, I can do it by platform or set app policies. So I can create apps that the company then, or my company makes available to users if they are part of my manager, endpoint management uh, domain here. So what I would do is I would add the app and I can add apps from a variety of different sources. So I can do Windows Store apps, Microsoft 365 apps, Microsoft Edge, or other apps including web links, line of business application, Windows 32 applications. Whatever it is, I select the app. I don't want to actually do this, but we'll just look at this a little bit. I can set the app name, the description, the publisher. In this case, I chose an app store app, so I'd have to put the URL where we're going to find it. I can choose which category to make this app, show this as a featured app in the company portal, give a URL for more information about it. So I can put all of my information here, and then I can assign this, and this is grayed out because I haven't defined everything, but here's where I can assign it to specific types of users or devices. So I can say we can assign it on a per device basis or a per user basis. I can have it deploy at a user's request or automatically. And then once I'm happy with all of it, I go to step three, which is where I review and create the app policy. And then that becomes an app that is now available for all of my users. And I can do that for every one of my platforms, Windows, iPad, iOS, Mac OS, Android. So I can put all of my apps in here, and you saw some of them we could make as featured apps or just available apps. That's something that we'll see in a client when we uh, look at that in probably another video. So I can also set endpoint security. So I have devices and device policies. I have apps that I can publish and make available, and then people can uh, grab those apps automatically. I have endpoint security where I can view all devices, set security baselines, look at security tasks, and I can manage antivirus, disk encryption, firewall settings. And these are all going to be dependent on the different types of devices that I'm using. So this firewall setting is going to give me a summary of my firewall settings, or I can view Windows 10 managed devices with the firewall turned off. I can look at endpoint detection responses and create policies. And Okay. I can go to my antivirus and I can look at the number of active malware um, detections on Windows 10. So you can see how we can do a lot of our device management management from here. Now, we also have the ability to generate reports. Now, one thing I will let you know is when you 
add devices to this. So you register or enroll devices into Endpoint Manager. It sometimes takes a while for them to come up. I have seen notes from Microsoft saying that it can take several hours up to a few days for things to populate completely so that they can show up in reports. So just be aware of that. So here are a bunch of predefined reports that we can view. And then we also have the ability to create users and then create groups. So I would create users, and right now I just have myself. So I can create users. If I click on Add User here, you'll see I can create user or invite a user. So if I invite a user, basically I'm inviting a user with an email address. And I'm, the user will be emailed an invitation that they can accept in order to begin collaborating. If I create a user, I create a new user in this organization. Now, I can do these individually. You can also see here I have links to do this in bulk. So I can do this using a CSV file. I can bulk create users using CSV files, or I can bulk import users using CSV files. Or down here, I can create my users one at a time. Just depends on how many I'm trying to put in and what I'm trying to do with them. Now I can also connect the users here to my Azure Active Directory or regular Active Directory. And I can import users that way. Also here, we have all users, password reset, here are different bulk operations, bulk create, bulk invite, bulk delete, and download users, an option to set up multi-factor authentication, and then to change what I'm viewing. Okay, and then we can create groups, and this is just like anything else. We can create groups, and we can give different uh, options to different groups, and then add users to the groups just to simplify management. All right, let's go back to devices. And I want to go to Windows and Windows Enrollment. Now, there are a variety of different ways that we can enroll here. So there are, and you see right here, learn about the seven different ways a Windows PC can be enrolled into Intune by users or by admins. And it can actually be done either way. So you can see we have automatic enrollment, configure Windows devices to enroll when they join or register with Azure Active Directory. You can see where we are. Here we can use Windows Hello for Business, use CNAME validation. So if we are creating CNAME records, let's go ahead and click on that so it'll show it here. Configuring a CNAME record in your DNS servers simplifies your users' access, keeps them from having to type in the address of the MDM server when they're enrolling. That will simplify things, but notice it can, like anything with, else with uh, DNS, it can take a while to propagate. We also have the Windows Auto Deployment, uh, Autopilot Deployment. So customize Windows Autopilot provisioning. So if we're deploying Windows using Autopilot, we can automatically enroll them in uh, Endpoint Manager at that point as well. Now you can also, a user can also do it manually. And you'll find that information here by going to learn more. And this is going to give you information on using self-enrollment. And we'll cover that here in a minute. In another video, you see we have Azure Active Directory Domain Join, Autopilot, Administrator based by using hybrid Azure AD Join, Configuration Manager, Co-Management, Device Enrollment Manager, Bulk Enroll. So each one of these is different ways of enrolling users into Endpoint Manager. Okay, so that gives you an idea of some of what Endpoint Manager is capable of doing. And it is a very interesting service. It has a lot of capability to it. Remember that it is cloud hosted with all the positives and negatives that that entails. So it is cloud hosted and that does have strengths, that does have weaknesses. And remember that there is that ongoing cost to it. If it provides enough resources, enough tools to make that worthwhile for you, it's a good investment. Okay, so 
In the next video, we're going to take a PC and we're going to show how you can enroll a, how you can manually enroll a Windows device that uh, one of your remote users might be using or home users might be using into the Endpoint Manager.